Hello students, welcome to Geology Classroom. In today's class, we are going to discuss about general characters of receptors or general receptor characteristics. This particular topic comes under MSc Geology, fourth semester, paper name CAP2, Comparative Animal Physiology 2, Unit 1 and Topic 1.1. So before we enter into the topic, uh, let us have some idea of uh, the terminology used in this topic. That is, first one is sensation, second one is receptors. So what is sensation? Sensation is a feeling of consciousness or subconsciousness. So it is an awareness, awareness of external stimuli or internal stimuli. If some stimuli is given to us, it may be external stimuli or internal stimuli. If we are able to recognize that stimuli consciously or subconsciously, then that particular phenomenon is called a sensation. So sensation is nothing but identifying the internal stimuli or external stimuli. Uh, identifying it consciously or subconsciously is called as sensation. And second term is receptors. So the important uh, part of Today's lecture is receptors. So what are receptors? Receptors are some special type of molecules. Okay, receptors are present on each and every type of cell in our body, not only in our body, all organisms, all living organisms on, the, on their cells, they will have these special molecules called as receptors. So in this case, uh, uh, in today's lecture, we are going to mainly focus on receptors present on sensory nerve cells or sensory neurons. So sensory neuron terminals, usually they will have some special molecules. Usually they will be uh, in the form of proteins. So and these molecules, they receive stimuli. And after receiving the stimuli, what they will do, they will relay relay means they will transfer they will transfer that stimuli into the internal uh, of the neuron in turn that information that stimuli will be transferred or transmitted to the central nervous system that is brain through spinal cord so usually the receptors that we are going to discuss in today's lecture are present on neurons especially on the endings of the neurons or on the terminal parts of the neurons. So not only on neurons, uh, all other cells also, they will possess receptors. So in general, we can say, what is a receptor? Receptor is any type of structure that is specialized to detect a stimulus. So receptor, special molecules that have the ability to detect or identify the stimulus and usually these receptors are present on the cell surface that means on the plasma membrane now coming to the general properties of receptors or characteristics of uh, receptors so the receptors any receptor it definitely uh, it should possess two characteristics one is uh, recognition second one is transduction so recognizing the stimulus is the first character and uh, the recognized stimulus must be transducted or it must be transmitted or it must be relayed or uh, to further so these are the two general properties of stimuli so first one let us see first one is recognition so the receptor usually as I, I have already told these are proteins in most cases so they must exist in a conformational state that allows the recognition and binding of a compound and uh, this thing is called as recognition so the molecule must be in a state in a conformational state or in a uh, arrangement that the molecule should allow the binding of a compound so here compound is nothing but it is a stimulus so the receptor must uh, form a bind uh, form a bond with the uh, 
stimulus or compound and to bind with that the argon uh, the arrangement of the molecule receptor molecule or the conformational state of the molecule must be allowing uh, for the binding of this compound so and this binding must satisfy some criteria and those criteria are saturability reversibility stereoselectivity agonist specificity and tissue specificity so these are the five criteria so these five criteria must be meet by this receptor so what is saturability so saturability is nothing but receptors uh, uh, will be existing in a finite number or in a fixed number so unlimited number of receptor molecules will not be there on any given cell so the number of receptor molecules will be limited so that after all the receptors are bind to a compound or a stimulus then automatically they will be saturated so the binding of receptor and stimulus will be completely saturated so saturability is the criteria so unsaturability means if unlimited number of receptors are there then that character or that criteria will be called as unsaturability but here the receptor so receptors are present in a finite number or in a limited number so that character is called as saturability and the next one is reversibility so what is reversibility reversibility is nothing but after binding with the stimulus after uh, serving the purpose after performing the duty this bond again must be separated so the receptor has to get separated from the stimulus otherwise it cannot receive the next stimulus so that uh, the binding must be having this character called as reversibility so otherwise the receptors will not be receiving the signals coming at a later stage or at a later time so for this purpose this bonding with the stimulus or compound usually will be a non covalent bonding or a weak intermolecular bonding so these bondings usually hydrogen bondings are van der waal forces uh, so the bonding will be in the form of hydrogen bonding or van der waal forces and a third character or third criteria is stereo selectivity in stereo selectivity the receptor should recognize only one of the naturally occurring optical isomers so usually all biological molecules all biological uh, macro molecules will be occurring in two forms and these two forms are called as isomers so usually we know that uh, dextro molecules and levo molecules d molecule or levo molecule uh, l molecule so dextro and levo so each molecule usually we you must have studied about this uh, glucose and fructose both these molecules will be occurring dextro form and levo form in both these forms they are having the similar uh, formula so no molecular difference is there only arrangement of some functional groups will be different so depending on the arrangement of functional groups they are called as dextro and levo likewise some molecules will be called as positive molecules and some molecules will be called as negative molecules so out of this available two types of uh, optical isomers the receptor should bind only one of the molecule only if it is able to bind with these two molecules then uh, that means uh, that receptor is not a good receptor so each receptor should bind only one of the available two optical isomers that is called stereo selectivity next fourth criteria is agonist specificity in agonist specificity usually uh, drugs should bind well with these receptors drugs are some molecules should bind well with this receptors so in this uh, case while they are uh, binding with these molecules so physically dissimilar molecules should not bind uh, should bind poorly so only the molecules or signals or stimuli having related structures they should bind well other molecules or dissimilar molecules or dissimilar 
stimuli they should bind poorly so this is called agonist specificity and the last one is tissue specificity in tissue specificity binding should occur in tissues known to be sensitive to the endogenous ligand so binding should occur at physiologically relevant concentrations so usually one uh, uh, signal or one stimulus may be reach all types of tissues but it should act on only one particular tissue so that is called tissue specificity so tissue specificity usually will not applicable uh, in nervous tissues uh, uh, to make it understand i will give you another example like uh, um, what this uh, thyroid stimulating hormone okay thyroid stimulating hormone will be secreted by pituitary gland so the pituitary gland secretes tss thyroid stimulating hormone so from thyroid gland this tss enters into blood stream through blood stream this tss reaches all parts in our body but tss is not supposed to work on all parts of our body tss is supposed to bind with only thyroid cells so it reaches all other parts TSH reaches all other parts through blood circulation, but it attaches to only the receptors which are present on thyroid gland cells. In remaining tissues, it will not bind to the receptors. So this is called tissue specificity. So the receptors are the stimuli are the ligand molecules are the compounds. They will bind to the specific tissue receptors only so a receptor will bind with a specific stimulus but it will not bind with all other stimulus so this is called tissue specificity so these are the five criteria that should be meet uh, uh, in recognition property and second character of receptors is transduction so and this is also important one so after recognizing the molecule after recognizing the stimulus it will bind with the receptor uh, so it by it will bind with the stimulus so receptor recognizes the molecules or stimulus after recognizing it after identifying it is perfect stimulus that i have to bind with this stimulus the receptor will bind with the stimulus so after binding with the stimulus the information must be sent inside the cell so that is called transduction so this is the second property of the receptors so in this what happens the receptor binds with the stimulus uh, stimulus is also called as agonist in some cases so it must be transduced that uh, the information must be sent into the cell uh, into some kind of functional response so this functional response may be biological or physiological so if the response is not sent inside the cell then the cell interior of the cell will not identify the presence of uh, uh, the coming of the presence of or the coming of the stimulus so for the interior to identify that stimulus has came some biological response must be delivered so that is called transduction so usually all these receptors are transducers so transducers are those they will transfer the information or transduct the information are called as transducers so they will convert one form of energy into another form of energy so usually these uh, transducers what they will do they will convert electrochemical energy into action potential so and we know action potential what is action potential so action potential is also one type of electrochemical energy usually this action potential will be generated uh, on the uh, present in the presence of a stimulus so the here the stimulus is being converted into action potential so stimulus energy is being converted into action potential and this action potential is nothing but electrochemical energy so usually this transducers they are converting stimulus energy into electrochemical energy or action potential energy so this is called sensory transduction so in the sensory transduction what will happen 
the information of the stimulus will be converted into if in the converted into this what action potential form so action potentials finally will be received by the brain and uh, after receiving these action potentials only brain will recognize what is happening outside the cells so that is called sensation so in this way the signals of the stimulus are being transduced to create sensation that's why it is also called as sensory transduction and receptor potentials are also one type of uh, action potentials we can say but these are local potentials so they will be uh, they will be receptor potentials will be produced uh, by the uh, neuron cells or some receptors so and uh, they will be produced locally and these receptor potentials are nothing but they are graded voltage changes across the plasma membrane of the receptor cell so some differences are there in between action potential and receptor potential we will know more details about these differences in next class so and receptor potential uh, also causes uh, the receptor cell to release a neurotransmitter and uh, this neurotransmitter stimulates the adjacent neurons in this way receptor potential also serves as uh, action potential when these voltage of the neuron reaches the threshold value then the neuron fires uh, impulses impulses means action potentials to the central nervous system in this way finally after receiving these impulses or action potential central nervous system uh, cns feels the sensation so we can see all these activities that occur in the sen in the sensation feeling first stimulus comes it binds with this uh, receptor so and the receptor uh, performs the sensory transduction function so this sensory transduction results in the formation of receptor potentials and these receptor potentials finally they will result in the generation of nerve impulse or action potential so this action potential finally reaches central nervous system when it receives central nervous system receives the nerve impulses or action potential sensation will be formed in our brain so so in the sensation process all these activities will be there so here in uh, diagrammatically also we can see all these processes so this is a plasma membrane of the neuron so here uh, we can see this neuron so this is the neuron terminal so usually neuron terminals will be having many dendrites so each dendrite again it will be uh, covered with this what plasma membrane so on the plasma membrane a special proteins will be there which act as receptors so this is receptor proteins so these receptor proteins have the ability to uh, they have the ability to bind uh, with different types of uh, stimuli so some receptors bind with light stimuli like uh, retina cells and some receptors bind with chemical stimuli like uh, receptor present in our tongue and in our nose and some receptors bind with mechanical stimuli like uh, uh, the receptor present on our skin so like this different types of uh, and some receptors also bind with sound stimuli like uh, uh, neurons are receptor present in our ear so in this way receptors are having the ability to bind with different types of stimuli so after binding with the stimuli they will what they will do they will send some signals inside so this signal is called transduction or signal transduction so this signal transduction finally it results in the action potential generation in the axon so this axon finally it transfers this uh, action potential throughout the length of this neuron and from one neuron to another neuron and from that neuron to the next neuron in this way action potential will be propagated and finally it will be received by the brain and uh, after receiving these all these signals all these uh, action potential brain will feel the sensation so <clears throat> even so uh, uh, for the sensory sensation to occur first stimulation of sensory receptor so then uh, transduction will be done so the stimulated receptor it will convert the stimulus into graded potential that means receptor potential these receptor potentials finally they will generate impulses 
these impulses are also called as action potentials and these action potentials will be conducted through one neuron to another neuron you know, like a chain reaction finally they will be received by central nervous system in the central nervous system what will happen the uh, impulses are action potentials coming from different parts of the body will be integrated so after integrating only finally central nervous system feels the sensation say for example to identify one thing we must receive different types of uh, stimuli for example if some enemy is coming to kill us we will see visual stimuli our retina cells will uh, see him come running and uh, some sounds uh, also will be received by our ears he shouting he, he must be saying that hey, i will kill you so our ears also will receive the sound signals so like this different types of signals will be received by different receptors so all these signals will travel through different pathways and finally they will reach brain so in the brain what will happen integration of all these signals will be done so brain will integrate all these sound uh, sound signals and visual signals in some cases uh, pressure signals or chemical signals so after integrating all these things only brain will feel the uh, uh, what is happening outside in the in, in our environment or in our vicinity so these are the events that occur in the sensation so and uh, sensation um, uh, to occur so the sensory receptors uh, <coughs> these receptors they will uh, receive the few informations regarding the stimulus that is uh, one is modality second one is location third one is intensity and uh, duration so what is the modality of the uh, stimulus so uh, we will know more details about this modality in next class and location where it is located the stimulus intensity so whether the whether the stimulus is strong or it is very weak and duration so for how much long uh, for how much time the stimulus has been uh, present so all these informations will be received by the receptor and they will be transmitted into the cell and uh, classification of receptors receptors have been classified uh, based on different thing, uh, based on different uh, uh, features or characters by stimulus modality the first category is by stimulus modality uh, based on this stimulus modality receptors are classified into five types chemoreceptors thermoreceptors nociceptors mechanoreceptors and photoreceptors chemoreceptors uh, receive chemical signals thermoreceptors receive uh, uh thermo related signals that means cool or hot uh, stimuli and nociceptors receive pain stimuli mechano receptors receive mechanical uh, stimuli like pressure like that and photoreceptors receive uh, light stimuli and second category is based on origin of stimuli so from where the stimulus has been coming one is exterior uh, exterior that means stimulus is coming from outside second one is uh, interior receptors and third one is proprioceptors coming from nearby areas like that and third category is based on the distribution of the receptors in the body one is general senses and uh, second one is special senses so special senses we know five special senses we are having uh, one is vision uh, and uh, uh, this what uh, tasting and smelling and uh, listening sounds and uh, skin so these are the five senses so out of these five senses the four uh, vision sound smells and taste uh, these four are called as special senses and in the skin general senses will be there so general senses uh, are different types uh, based on the structure and physiology of the receptors one is uh, unencapsulated nerve endings uh, these are three types free nerve endings tactile discs or merkel discs third one is hair uh, or peritracheal endings second category in this thing is uh, encapsulated nerve endings these are four types one is uh, tactile corpuscles or meissner corpuscles second one is a uh, cross end bulb third one is lamellated corpuscles and uh, fourth one is uh, ruffini corpuscles so pain receptors so pain receptors they will receive pain stimuli stimuli that will 
cause sensation of pain, feeling of pain. So what is pain? Pain is nothing but it is a discomfort caused by a tissue injury or a noxious stimulus or a poisonous stimulus or any other uh, stimulus that will lead to the uh, evasive action. So on the whole, pain is nothing but a discomfort. So it may be caused by any other activity, any type of activity. So they are pain stimuli. So nociceptors, uh, uh, these are the special type of nerve fibers that mediate pain. So nociceptors are the receptors that will react with uh, or bind with uh, pain stimuli and they will transfer this pain information into the nervous system. And these nociceptors are two types. One is myelinated, second one is non-myelinated. And uh, somatic pain, uh, the nociceptors are also, um, again, they are further divided into different types. Some nociceptors, they will receive somatic pain. This type of nociceptors present uh, in skin, muscles, and joint. And some other uh, receive visceral pain. This visceral pain will be present, uh, the visceral pain receiving the nociceptors are present in, in the visceral parts of our body or internal organs of our body, usually thoracic cavity, abdominal cavity, pelvis region. So in this region, all the internal organs or visceral organs will be having visceral pains, receivers or visceral pain nociceptors and referred pain nociceptors. These referred pain nociceptors, they will perceive the pain coming from parts of the body and that are not actually stimulated. That means they will convey the information coming from other nociceptors, but usually these referred uh, pain nociceptors will not receive the pain directly, they will receive indirectly. And uh, classification of uh, pain receptors based on stimulus, uh, exterior receptors, if the pain stimulus is outside, then such type of nociceptors are called as exterior receptors. Usually these exterior receptors are present on the peripheral parts of our body, usually on our skin. And uh, they will react with this uh, external environment and they will receive the external stimuli uh, that cause pain. And uh, in this thing, uh, free nerve endings are there. So these are tactile. Usually tactile means uh, touch receptors. They are present in the skin and they, super, they will receive superficial pain. Cross corpuscules, they are also present on skin. They will uh, receive uh, pain information related uh, to cold. So they are also called as cold receptors. And Meissner corpuscules, they are also uh, touch receptors. Uh, they are uh, also present in skin. And uh, fourth one is Merkel's carpuscules. They are also tactile in function, touch receptors. And uh, these Merkel's carpuscules, they are present in oral mucosa. Uh, that means inside our oral cavity and submucosa of the tongue also. And uh, fifth one is Ruffini's carpuscules. They are pressure receptors. They will receive pressure and uh, warmth of the uh, stimulus. So hardness of the stimulus and pressure of the stimulus uh, will be received by this Ruffini's carpuscules. And second one is interoceptors. So these, uh, 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 these five types are exteroreceptors. So they are present on the peripheral parts of our body. Second type uh, in this thing uh, is enteroceptors. They are located inside our body. So and uh, they will serve involuntary body functions below conscious level. So unconsciously or subconsciously they will receive uh, pain information from inside our body. Uh, again, these are also uh, several types, free nerve endings. They will receive the, they will receive the pain from the visceral body parts and Pacinian carpuscules, they will receive pressure of the internal body parts. And third category is proprioceptors. These proprioceptors, they usually, they are, uh, involved in automatic functioning and perceiving of movement, body movements and pressures on the body and position of the body. So these informations will be received by this proprioceptors. Proprio means usually this, this is related to the position of our body and movement of our body. Along with this position uh, things and movement things, apart from these things, pressure related information also will be received by this proprioceptors. Again, in this proprioceptors, free nerve ending types of uh, proprioceptors will be there and Golgi tendon organs uh, type of uh, second type of proprioceptors also will be there. 
free nerve endings they will perceive deep somatic pain and other sensations from inside body parts or visceral body parts and galgi tendons usually they are present uh, they are related they are present in this bone region bones uh, usually our skeleton system and they are mechanoreceptors in between muscle tendons and they will relay the data concerning muscle length and muscle tension so muscle pains uh, that are attached to our skeleton will be received by this galgi tendon organs and uh, third category is muscle spindles these muscle spindles are also mechanoreceptors they are present between the muscle fibers and they also receive the pain caused from this uh, muscle fibers and the fourth category is parsinian corpuscles they will receive the information uh, or pain caused by the pressure and uh, last one is uh, periodontal receptors they are present in the uh, teeth uh, due to the movements in the teeth uh, in some cases uh, pain may be generated this pain information will be relieved by this periodontal receptors next coming to skin receptors skin receptors they are present on uh, inside the skin so based on the function or stimulus modality there are uh, several types one is thermoreceptors they will receive temperature changes mechanoreceptors they will receive mechanical stimuli and uh, these mechanoreceptors again there are three types tactile receptors they will receive touch information and baroreceptors receive pressure information proprioceptors receive distortion or position changes of the body and third category is nociceptors as we have already discussed they will receive the pain information uh, due to injuries or any other uh, pressure related uh, things and uh, uh, based on morphology <coughs> based on morphology uh, again the, the several types uh, are present in this thing uh, first one is free nerve endings these free nerve endings are non myelinated fibers so myelin sheath will not be there around them so and uh, they will enter uh, the epidermis so they are present uh, uh, just below the skin uh, uh, they are present in the epidermis and they will extend as far as the stratum granulosum and so the stratum granulosum is a layer in the structure of our skin so in the stratum granulosum till the stratum granulosum these free nerve endings will be uh, arranged and in this free nerve endings as we have already discussed merkel endings will be there these uh, merkel uh, endings they are attached to the epidermal cells and uh, they are present in the stratum germinatum layer and the uh, second one is encapsulated nerve endings in this parsinian corpuscles they will receive pressure meissner corpuscles touch receptors rufinis corpuscles they will receive heat or warmth uh, temperature high temperatures and crosses uh, corpuscles they will receive uh, cool temperatures or cold uh, information so in this uh, slide uh, different types of uh, things can be seen so you can take a screenshot of this and uh, you can uh, identify them at your leisure next uh, uh, taste receptors taste receptors are present uh, uh, in our tongue so and uh, they are uh, these receptors are present in the goblet shape like uh, are a ball shape and uh, in this thing they will have several epithelial cells and a pore will be there in this goblet and through this pore all these epithelial cells will open uh, into the submucosa mucosa of our tongue and this is lemon shaped so and all these uh, goblet cells are uh, uh, taste buds they measure about 70 microns in length and 40 microns in diameter approximately 10000 uh, taste buds are present in our tongue and they are located on the edges and uh, dorsum of the tongue epiglottis soft palate pharynx inside the cheeks also not only on the tongue so uh, in all these parts inside the cheeks soft palate pharynx region epiglottis and uh, on tongue uh, so these are the locations uh, where the uh, taste buds are present and life, uh, lifespan of these taste buds is uh, around 10 to 12 days so uh, 10 to 12 after 10 to 12 days the old uh, or worn out uh, taste buds will be deleted and new taste buds will be replaced them so and they are constantly replaced by the cell division uh, that means mitotic division so 40 to 60 cells uh, uh, will be there in each taste bud so and uh, they will form three types of cells on the whole 40 to 60 cells will be there 
three types of cells will be there and uh, one is a uh, taste cells or gustatory cells so they will receive taste information and uh, sensory cells the sensory cells will be in banana shape uh, these are taste cells or sensory cells and uh, second one is supporting cells so they are uh, sub tentacular cells uh, they will sub give support to the taste cells and uh, uh, the uh, last one is basal cells they are present on the basal region of this taste but they are also give support to this both things supporting cells and uh, taste cells and taste hair also will be there from this taste cells this taste hair uh, will have a slender microvilli so these uh, extend from this taste cells are first type of cells and taste spore taste spore uh, is also present in each uh, taste cell uh, this is nothing but a narrow opening uh, from where taste hairs are projected out from the taste cell and uh, distribution of uh, different types of uh, taste uh, cells present on tongue so here in this region uh, uh, <coughs> bitter uh, taste receptors will be there so in the peripheral or in the edges uh, here salty and uh, on the tip of this uh, tongue uh, sweet uh, receptors will be there so these are the different types of uh, uh, receptors and their arrangements are the geographic or spatial distribution or arrangement and the uh, primary taste uh, received by this uh, uh, taste buds or taste receptors uh, usually five types of uh, information will be received so this informations are also called as modalities so sweet information or sweet stimuli salty sour bitter and umami umami is nothing but a meaty smell so meaty taste meaty taste meaty taste is called as umami so this chicken mutton fish all those tastes are called as umami so these are the five tastes uh, will be received by these taste buds so in taste buds uh, present in papillae also fungiform papillae circumvallate papillae and uh, palatal papillae three type uh, uh, and fourth one is other papillae so four types of papillae will be there and taste buds uh, may occur in the oral or subpharyngeal locations including the lips inner surfaces of the lingual mucosa epiglottis and various pharyngeal regions of the upper one third uh, of the esophagus as well as the pharynx so in all these areas these uh, papillae will be present in this papillae taste buds will be located so in the uh, olfactory receptors olfactory receptors present uh, in the olfactory mucus or uh, mucosa of the uh, nasal region or uh, nasal cavity so in this thing a uh, posterior dorsal part of the nasal cavity will be there in this posterior no dorsal part of the nasal cavity this uh, olfactory receptors will be there uh, the total area of this uh, uh, posterior dorsal part of the nasal cavity will be around 2.5 square centimeters so it includes the upper third of the nostril and septum and superior conchae region so and uh, they will be having uh, two types of cells uh, olfactory cells and supporting cells so here we can see this uh, this is the olfactory bulb olfactory cells all these things they will be supported by supporting cells which are present inside the mucosa so with this uh, today's topic is over uh, we'll meet uh, with a new topic in next class